Hi, my name is Matt Phillippe and this is a video tutorial on how to set up a quick, easy deploy big data solution using uh, Amazon Web Services. Today we're going to talk about EMR Spark uh, launching a cluster uh, using S3 storage and Zeppelin notebooks. Uh, this is great, probably takes less than 10 minutes to deploy from scratch. Uh, you get the high availability of the AWS storage and compute as well as the high durability of the uh, storage and then the easy to launch and easy to use Zeppelin notebooks. For this demo we're gonna go through 11 steps. Uh, first we're gonna go to the University of California Irvine and download a data set and uh, we'll call that S3 input file. Then we're gonna log into the AWS console we're going to create an S3 storage bucket and upload that UC Irvine data file that we downloaded. We'll create a resource group to track all of the resources we act activate in AWS. We'll launch a EMR Spark cluster. Then we're going to launch a Zeppelin notebook and create a note and run some scripts. We will save that notebook for later reuse. We're going to terminate our Spark cluster. Then we're going to launch another Spark cluster import that notebook, uh, run some scripts again, and then we're going to terminate and delete all resources that we set up so we make sure we're not paying for anything anything more. This is my standard boilerplate warning before we dive into the demo. Uh, we're going to talk about cost and security a little bit, but this is not a best practices on security and uh, cost analysis. If you're going to be using cloud services, uh, it is important and part of a comp core competency to learn costing and security. Uh, for this demonstration, we're not even going to use passwords. We're not going to use anything. There's really going to be no security. Uh, storage cost, it's pay for what you use. That's correct. And then compute cost. So compute cost is it's not pay for what you use. Um, so there's a little bit element of that, or there is actually an element of that, um, but really it's pay for what you provision. So if you go on vacation, forget to turn off the lights and heating and air conditioning, the power company doesn't care you didn't use it, they'll still bill you for it. So when you're done and not using it, you need to terminate and delete the VMs and clusters. Step one, we're gonna go pull a data set off of the uh, UC Irvine machine learning site. Google UCI machine learning, I've gone to data sets, and I already know the data set that I want that I've been working with. Uh, so once this comes up here, I'm going to control F. I'm going to do home, okay, gas sensors for home activity. And I'm going to data folder. I'm going to download this. It's going to go to my downloads. And when it's done, I'm going to extract it. Okay. Extract. Okay, and now I'm in the folder. I want the metadata, but I'm just going to change the name to S3 input file all lowercase. And that'll be the uh, file that we use in the demo. Step two we're going to log into the AWS Management Console. So Google AWS Management Console, sign into the console, I already have my, uh, okay, I'm actually doing a security best practice here, multi-factor authentication. I'm using uh, Google Authenticator on my phone. Okay, there's where you can install it. Here's what it looks like on my phone right now. Right here. So go to my phone. page. Let's make it a little smaller here. Okay, here's kind of what it looks like. 
Step three, we're going to set up storage. So we're back at the, you can always go back to your dashboard by clicking the cube in the upper corner here. So we're looking for storage. S3, Amazon's uh, AWS's general all purpose storage. So we'll go to S3. I've actually made this real small, make it a little bigger right now. So I'm going to create a bucket. So this needs to be unique in the Amazon universe. So Spark Zeppelin demo, all lowercase. Nobody has that, so we're good. I'm going to do US West, North Carol California. And then this new interface is strange. I found that I had to reduce it just so I can get to the buttons. I can't scroll down. So uh, I had to shrink the screen to get to next. Scroll down here. I'm going to put a tag in here. I'm going to add a tag. This tag is just going to be called Spark Zeppelin Demo. Save. Next. I think everything's okay there. Create a bucket. There. We have our bucket. click on that bucket. I'm going to want to upload. I'm going to add a file. Downloads. UT sensor submission. S3 input file. Open. Next. 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 Upload. There's the file in the Spark Zeppelin demo bucket. Step four, we're going to create a resource group to help track all of the uh, resources and services we set up in AWS. Azure has a similar concept as AWS. Uh, conceptually, they're the same, but they um, operate differently. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And I'm going to go up here to resource groups. Create a resource group. I'm going to create a resource group. So I'm going to actually go down to tags here. I just created a tag. So I'm going to create a resource group for Spark Zeppelin demo. And the resource group name is going to be called Spark Zeppelin demo. So resource group name Spark Zeppelin demo. Find the tag that we just created. All regions, all supported resource types, save. Okay, and then for this resource group right here that we just created, I clicked on up here. You can now see um, down here that S3 bucket that we just created. When we go to launch uh, EMR cluster, we're going to see uh, EMR and EC2 instances pop up in here as well. Step five, time to launch a EMR Spark cluster. Let's go to the dashboard. Okay, you think it might be compute, but actually it's under analytics, EMR. Before I do this, I want to make sure I'm in Northern California. The Our storage that we just set up, so I went back to the dashboard, I'm going to go to S3. Our storage bucket that we set up here is US West Northern California. So we want our data in the same place as we have our compute. So we go back to the dashboard, go back down to analytics, find EMR. I'm in Northern California. I'm going to create a cluster. I'm going to call this Spark Zeppelin Demo, all lowercase. We're not going to go through the advanced options, but it is worth going through the advanced options. Um, this is the most simplest way to deploy something. Obviously, we're using the UI here, but there's other ways, the CLI. Um, but right now we're going to stick to the quick and easiest deployment, which I think is really cool because it just shows you how fast you can uh, get working in the Zeppelin notebook. 
software configuration. Spark down here with Zeppelin Notebooks. Again, if you go to Advanced Options, you can really pick your configurations. Okay, hardware configuration. We're going to go with three nodes, and then we're going to change this here to M4 large. And this is a good time to talk about cost. So I'm going to go out to the web page here, and AWS does it a little different than Azure. They charge you for the number of nodes, and then they have a separate price just for the EMR service. Whereas Azure, it's more of a bundled thing. If I go back here, you can see M4 large, so we got three nodes, so that's three VMs. Now, an A Azure, they have a nice little feature where they kind of tell you, give you an idea of the estimate of the cost per hour. AWS, you have to go look it up yourself. So here we are. Remember, I changed to M4 large. We have 14 cents an hour per instance, plus the EMR charge of 3 cents an hour. So that's going to be, so we have three instances, three nodes. So 14 times 3 plus 3 cents gives us 45 cents an hour. And then I'll stop and do a little math here. Okay, well, let's see here. I have uh, let's, I have eleven dollars a day, three hundred thirty dollars a month, or thirty nine hundred sixty dollars a year. So these these aren't the only costs, but this is the primary cost related to uh, running. Uh, this particular cluster, there's data movement charges. So, really, no, I don't think a pretty good deal. I mean, if you uh, do this yourself, if you're a smaller organization for four thousand dollars a year, that's assuming you leave it on the entire time. You know, not bad. The one thing to know here is that AWS is pricing. They round up from the nearest half hour. Not sure where that is in here, but they do round up, and that's in here somewhere. Okay, well I can't find it. Whereas uh, Azure is your billing starts once the cluster is created and is prorated per minute. So, what does that mean? Well. EMR, AWS EMR clusters seem to launch a lot quicker than Azure. So I haven't benchmarked it, but just in, you know, me using the services a little bit. Uh, so just one thing to know there. AWS rounds up. Azure is uh, prorated by the minute. Uh, AWS boots up a lot faster. Um, okay, so M4 large, three clusters. We're not even going to use a key pair this time because we're not going to we're not going to SSH into the machine. I'm going to create a cluster. Proceed without a key pair. Create a cluster. Okay, I'm going to start the timer. Stop. Reset. Start. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, we're three minutes and 46 minutes seconds in here. It's at starting. We're waiting for it to go to waiting, which is kind of the official sign when it says waiting that the VM's ready to use. Okay, while we're waiting here, I just had to add this uh, to my original video, and it has to do with opening up the firewalls. Um, so as we're waiting here, uh, we were going to want to go down to the security and access on our EMR cluster main page here. And you'll see security groups for masters and core and tasks. So we want to click on the security group for the master. And that's going to take us to the uh, EC2 uh, main screen and, um, and then the uh, network and security group section of that screen. So 
click on where it says Elastic Map Reduce Master. Click on there. And then down pops these tabs right here. Description Inbound, Outbound Tags. Click on Inbound. And then we're going to want to edit. And then we're going to add a rule. Okay. So purposes of this demonstration, as I said, this is not a security best practices. So I'm going to open it up to all traffic. And then I'm going to put anywhere. But in reality, uh, you know, you could do all TCP, you could do custom T TCP. I believe the port is 8890. Um, I didn't have any luck with that. Uh, so I'm just going to go with the safe route here, which is going to open up all traffic to everything. So all traffic, it'll default to this. And then importantly, save. Okay. And then we can go back to our dashboard screen right here and wait for it to complete. Okay, I actually think that it's ready to use right now, even though it doesn't say waiting. How I know is where it says connections, it went from uh, enable web. Uh, it now has separate lines here. So if I click on Zeppelin, let's see what happens. Okay, it took me to my Zeppelin notebook. So I think it's ready, you know. So I'm going to stop the clock. It was actually ready 30 seconds ago. So it took about, oh, I don't know, just a little over five minutes to deploy, and it's ready to go. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do here now that it's deployed, I'm going to click View All. I'm going to put a key in here, Spark, Zeppelin, Demo, Save. Go up to my resource group here, Spark Zeppelin. Okay, now it says I have two EMR clusters going here. And here's Spark Zeppelin demo. And then down here I have my S3 bucket in my Spark Zeppelin demo resource group. Step six. We are going to launch a Zeppelin notebook and create a note and work with some data. Before we do that, let's take a quick overview. So we've set up our storage at Amazon uh, S3. Uh, our compute, we launched an EMR cluster. So in our case, uh, we launched a Spark cluster. We have one master node and we didn't uh, two worker nodes. So we have a three node cluster not five as configured in here. Now we're going to go work in the Zeppelin notebook. A couple ways you can get to Zeppelin notebook. First you want to go back to your EMR cluster. So in our case we're in the resource group and Spark Zeppelin resource group right here. So I'm just going to launch back into the EMR screen uh, home page here. So for our Spark Zeppelin demo EMR cluster. Connections. Zeppelin. Just click on Zeppelin, and then Zeppelin will come up. I want to create a note, UCI Home Sensor Gas Data, create note, and then that brings us to a blank paragraph. Rather than type everything in, I have some scripts that I used in uh, Azure, so I'm going to copy those in here, and I'm going to fix them. Get rid of the Livy, get rid of this, okay, get rid of this, and then it's really simple here. So when we want to read our file from storage, it's S3 then the bucket name, Spark Zeppelin Demo, and then it's the input file name. So if I go back here, just to validate what we have here, go into my bucket, okay. here's my bucket, launch into my bucket. So I have S3 input file in the Spark Zeppelin demo. Spark Zeppelin demo. 
S3 input file. Okay, it's really that simple, and we're going to want to run this. So I'm going to uncomment out these lines, run it. Pause here, Let's see how long it takes. 55 seconds, and our count action up here came back with 101 uh, lines or rows or records or whatever. So, why don't we just go back and check in the original data file? Here's the original data file one, two, all the way down to 101 lines. So, that's our count. So, that's correct. Um, so we just did a count, but why don't we write back to S3? It's going to be the same path, but actually, why don't I just type it out? It's going to be the same path, S3 backslash spark zeppelin demo. This time, instead of calling it output data lake, I'll put output S3. Comment this. Okay, so I commented the commented out the count actions. Now I have the the save as text file. Run that. Okay, pause while it runs. Okay, that took ten seconds. So we're going to go out to our S3 bucket here again. I'm going to refresh this, and then you can see the output s3.txt here. So we just wrote back to our s3 bucket. So one final comment here is, so this is S3, and uh, in Azure you can use the ADL and the WASB interfaces. It's important to note these aren't native in Zeppelin. They're interfaces between uh, the Hadoop file system. So you're not seeing HDFS here, but it is here. These are just interfacing uh, between those, so making it really easy, uh, you know, creating less manipulation of files in HDFS. You won't, not all distributions of uh, Spark or Hadoop will have this. I think it's I think it's in there, but sometimes there's manual configuration that needs to be done. With uh, AWS CMR, it's already native uh, to the Zeppelin notebook and the uh, Hadoop and Spark. We just launched the Zeppelin notebook. Uh, did some create counts, wrote to storage. Now we're going to save that file. Really simple. Here's the work we just did. I'm going to export the notebook and it's going to be exported down to my downloads right here. Again, kind of similar to Azure, I wish there was a way to export to an S3 bucket, but we have this now in my downloads and we're now ready to terminate the cluster. We just saved our Zeppelin notebook and now we're done working for the day. So we want to uh, terminate the Spark cluster so we're not using it anymore. Uh, we'll still be paying for the S3 storage. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, back to, I can go to my resource group and then from within the resource group I can go find my cluster. Here it is, Spark Zeppelin under EMR launch that and then simply I'm going to terminate terminate and I'll set the clock see how long this takes here oh and whether one other thing while we're waiting here so you can see elapsed time 36 minutes so remember I got charged 45 cents but AWS rounds up and I think even if you if you use 10 minutes, it still rounds up to an hour. So I was for the first hour, you're going to get charged an hour no matter what. So I'm going to get charged 45 cents for this. Okay, terminated. So actually less than 
right around five minutes, maybe less than five minutes total time. It's a couple days later, we want to work again. So we had saved our Zeppelin notebook, so we have that. And then we still have our S3 bucket with the data file in it. So we're just going to launch the cluster. So here's the final page here. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the cube. I'm going to go down to my, here's my dashboard. I'm going to go down and find analytics, EMR, Spark Zeppelin demo. A cluster. I believe that this is available now that I terminated that other cluster. That's the cluster name. We're going to pick Spark. I'm going to do the same one before where I did M4 large, basically 45 cents an hour. Remember, once I fire this up, the first hour AWS rounds up, so I'm going to get charged 45 cents no matter what. Proceed without a key pair, create cluster, and I'll time it again. Okay, at a minute 30 in, I saw the enable web connection pop up here, but Zeppelin and the other elements are not still ready. Okay, at 4.30, 4 minutes and 30 seconds, we had the Zeppelin here pop up. It's now highlighted. Let's see if I can get it. Yep. Okay. That's pretty amazing. So it's actually really four minutes and 30 seconds uh, to get that reactivated. Okay. So great. We're going to import the note that we were working on. Here it is. Okay. That's down here. UCI home sensor gas data. You can see the uh, S3 right here that we have put in there. File's already in there, so I'm going to run this. Okay, I made a mis mistake when I did that. I needed to comment this line out, the file that I imported. Uh, we had this active right here, so uncomment these two lines, comment this line. Shift, Enter, Run took 60 seconds. So really to relaunch the cluster and get the data reloaded again, less than six minutes. Okay, we're, we're done with the project and we want to uh, get rid of all the resources. We don't want to uh, get charged for anything any longer. And so um, we're going to go find our resource group. So this is a little... Azure makes it really easy. You find the resource group and then you can hit a button that says delete all the uh, resources in that group. Uh, a little dangerous but actually also very very simple. So in this one we have our Spark Zeppelin demo and there's no button to the best of my knowledge to do that. You can delete the resource group's Spark Zeppelin depot but it just deletes the name doesn't actually delete the resources in there. So the first thing I want to go gonna want to go find is my EMR cluster. Okay. Spark Zeppelin demo. Okay. Oh. Nothing in there. Interesting. I didn't terminate that. Maybe I need to refresh this. Okay. EMR clusters. That's interesting. So maybe if I, uh, okay, since I used the same name, I didn't like that so much. Didn't like it. So maybe it'd take a while for it to clear. So anyway, um, I'm going to do this the other way. I'm going to go back to the cube here. I'm going to go to analytics, find EMR, do it the old-fashioned way. So I can see my clusters. This one is waiting. Okay, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to terminate that cluster. Terminate. Okay, that's terminating. I'm going to go back to my resource group here. Okay, so this cluster is terminating here. These instances that are active are terminating. I'm going to go down to S3, find the 
S3 bucket, launch the S3 bucket, you first have to, if you want to delete the objects in your bucket, you have to delete, okay, so here we are at the bucket, highlight this line, you have to empty the bucket first, so I can go in and delete that file that we put out of there, or else I can do this, where I say empty the bucket, and then it would delete everything in that bucket. Okay. And then now I'm back here, I want to delete the bucket. So it's empty the bucket first, and then delete the bucket. And the bucket's now gone. And that includes everything, so all the resources are deleted or terminated, so we're not going to get charged for anything else. So that ends uh, this demonstration. And um, so yeah, we s set up our bucket, we created a cluster, we launched the notebook, we did some work, we saved the notebook, we terminated the cluster, we restarted the cluster, we relaunched the notebook, and then we deleted all the resources. So I launched the cluster twice, remember AWS rounds ups, and I said, I calculated 45 cents a minute, and I think that's right. So for the first time I calculated it, even though I didn't use it for a full hour, I got charged 45 cents. And then when I relaunched that cluster again later, I used it for less than 10 minutes, but it rounds up, so I think I got charged for another hour. So I got charged for two hours total. 45 cents times 290 cents. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.